For today's video, I want to go over how we can enhance the diet of our cherry shrimp by going over some insights from a research paper that actually examined the gut contents of neocaridina shrimp across multiple setups which are designed to emulate natural conditions. While a lot of people assume that cherry shrimp and other neocaridina shrimp varieties will only feed on algae and biofilm, this study does reveal that their diet contains a surprisingly large range of different protein sources. So with this knowledge we can make more informed choices to enhance the care we offer to our cherry shrimp or other neocaridina shrimp. First I want to quickly go over how the researchers actually conducted the experiment because they began by collecting substrate samples from two different rivers in Germany and placed them into various aquariums. After allowing the tanks to settle for several weeks they then introduced some neocaridina shrimp. During the waiting period, the substrates naturally occurring micro and mesofauna were able to establish and develop their own colonies. Algae also had plenty of time to grow in the tanks too, making sure there was plenty of different food options in there for the shrimp. At the end of the experiment, the shrimp were frozen to preserve the contents of their stomachs and then examined under a microscope to see what the shrimp had actually chosen to eat. So moving on and I want to get into the actual findings of the research paper and this is what they found in the stomachs of the shrimp. 40% contained nematodes which are tiny little worms. 50% contained microcrustaceans like copods or daphnia. 55% contained oligochaetes which are slightly larger worms. 65% contained algae and 95% contain detritus such as decaying plant matter. We often think of our neocaridina shrimp as being peaceful little scavengers at the bottom of the food chain but this evidence does suggest that they are actually micro predators with a clear preference when it comes to their prey. In some of the test tanks the researchers observed minimal predation on the micro crustaceans and oligochaetes after 21 days likely because the shrimp were preferring to go after the smaller nematodes. But by day 42 there was a noticeable decline of around 40% in both the micro crustaceans and the oligochaetes in the tanks compared to the control tank that didn't have any neocardina shrimp in it at all. My personal theory is that as the nematode population declined the shrimp began targeting the slightly larger prey available in their environments. This can also explain how so few of the shrimp stomachs contained nematodes at the end of the test period because they had simply eaten so many of them early on in the test period that they'd simply passed out of their system. Now I can't show it due to copyright reasons but if you google search this reddit thread you'll find a video of a neocaridina shrimp actively hunting a worm in its environment. Now they are definitely not the most efficient hunters as you'll see in that video clip but it is interesting to watch them do their best at turning that wriggling worm into a meal. Moving on and we get to how we can try and replicate this kind of natural diet in our own aquariums and thankfully to some extent it's actually not that difficult. Starting with detritus which was found in 95% of the shrimp's gut content and this one is easy to replicate. You can intentionally add leaf litter to your tank such as mulberry leaves or oak leaves with these being particular favourites of my shrimp. Alternatively if you keep a planted tank you can just leave the decaying leaves from your live plants in the tank and your shrimp will make quick work of them as they break them down and eat them. Algae is another simple addition to this type of aquarium for most people. I honestly think that the vast majority of aquariums out there will already have plenty of algae in there even if it's not visible to the human eye because microalgae starts growing and then the shrimp eat it but before we can even see it. So there's no need to go out and buy algae wafers as in most cases your shrimp should be able to graze on the algae grown in your tank naturally. But the trickier part is introducing nematodes, micro crustaceans and oligochaetes. That said, detritus worms have somehow found their way into every single one of my aquariums without me even trying to introduce them to that ecosystem. So to some extent at least it is highly likely that you have at least one piece of this puzzle already in your aquarium. Here in the United Kingdom we are quite lucky because pond culture is massive and there's some dedicated retailers out there just for ponds where we can buy various little critters. 
The only one I've personally tried is wildlifepondaquarium.co.uk, but I've also purchased things from vendors on Etsy too. However, it's not as simple as just purchasing Daphnia, Cyclops or types of microworm and then adding them to our aquarium because they also need a sustainable food source to thrive. Now I have experimented with this with one of my aquariums before, but my zebra daniels ended up eating the majority of the little microfauna critters that I ended up adding anyway. But I do want to try this again in a new tank setup with a lot more plant cover to see if I can make it work. My current plan is to use a capped dirt substrate which should provide a base of food for the nematodes and oligochaetes. I also plan to add leaf litter early on to boost detritus levels too. Once the plants start growing and need trimming I can also leave certain cuttings in the tank or just leave certain leaves to decay naturally. I'm honestly not sure if this approach will work for the micro crustaceans but I'm hoping it will be helpful and I can get something going. I do seem to have a copod population thriving in one of my better fish tanks without ever trying to feed them or do anything and it took me months before I even noticed they were there when I was recording under my macro lens. So with any luck I'll be able to get some of them grown into my new 29 gallon scape that I'm setting up soon and hopefully build out one of these ecosystems. Moving on and I want to talk about supplemental feeding because while detritus and algae are easy to provide I guess that most people, myself included, would prefer to just use supplemental feeding over trying to cultivate microfauna in our tanks because it's so much easier. If you don't have a planted tank where you can just let the leaves decay naturally you can add options like oak leaves, mulberry leaves and spinach leaves because they are affordable, widely available and my shrimp absolutely love them. It is worth noting that these leaves do contain oxalic acid which can interfere with the shrimp's mineral absorption rates but to my understanding blanching them before you feed them to your shrimp should drastically reduce any risk. You can also find dehydrated leaf based pellets such as those made from spinach or dandelion leaves and my shrimp also seem to love these but I am new to trying them in my tanks. When it comes to adding protein my go to choices are fluval bug bites and hikari mini algae wafers and despite the name those wafers actually contain very little algae and their primary ingredient is actually fish meal. I've been feeding both of these to all of my shrimp colonies for almost two years now and my shrimp seem to absolutely love both of them and I use them interchangeably now. And thankfully it's just a quick and easy way to try and get some protein into my shrimp's diet without having to cultivate any of these little critters. While they are more controversial I personally use frozen bloodworms as a treat food for my Neocaridina shrimp colonies once per week. I've been doing it for almost two years now and I barely miss a week with them either and I've never noticed any problems with it. But the main takeaway from this section is that it's actually surprisingly simple to get some protein into the diet of your shrimp. So I just want to quickly finish by going over why I personally think that this is important when keeping Neocaridina shrimp colonies and simply put it's about giving our shrimp a more balanced natural diet. I know that I've said this countless times in my videos but I consistently see more baby shrimp being produced by my shrimp colonies when I'm supplementing their diet with protein sources. If you have a shrimp colony that isn't breeding much and you're only letting them graze on the naturally grown algae and biofilm in their tank, just try to increase their protein intake by a small amount and I do think you'd be surprised by the change in breeding rates. Beyond just the macronutrients, offering a wider variety of foods helps to boost micronutrients in their diet too which can improve overall shrimp health. Going back to breeding your Neocaridina shrimp and making sure your females are getting plenty of vitamins and minerals via their diet should in theory at least help increase the number of eggs that they are producing, the health of those eggs and the health of those baby shrimplets once the eggs hack. Anyway guys that brings the video to an end and I hope it's been interesting, thanks for watching and good luck with your shrimp colonies.